statement affected area ahead. Please proceed with caution. So hello everyone, this hello. is uh, Bo and Low of the 50-somethings. And the topic today, if you hadn't noticed from the thumbnail, is what do you do when you're caught in a storm and your awning blows off and you've got to get up and go to the next uh, next state the next day or travel day. Yep. So uh, we weren't at home or we weren't at home to catch it. We stepped out. It was a beautiful day. Uh, nothing was showing that it was supposed to hit and when we came back we had some very surprised neighbors yes, we letting did. us know that they tried to help us <laughs> and um so sorry about our loss and the moral of the story is always put your awning in when you leave we uh we did have to leave the next day uh this is missouri and we're heading to kansas and what this video is about is what do you do when you don't have time to order in the parts or you just have to go well take a look at the video see how we dealt with the situation and that's what you do you deal with the situation we've actually had a few things that we've had to deal we do deal with excuse me that we're gonna do videos on so I hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe leave us some comments and um, when we get to Colorado which is two states over we're actually going to try to fix this awning, and we'll talk about that at that point. Yeah. And would you say like and subscribe, and please pull your awnings in. Yeah. All right, guys. So we are our last day in Missouri. We uh, went and checked out downtown St. Charles with some friends, and when we came back, uh, there was a strong storm and we had left the awning out it did not survive Bo already when we got here it was raining really bad so we couldn't really um film it but he went ahead and cut this cut the awning because it was just flying all over and it was going to be more trouble if the winds kicked up as bad uh it looks like this one arm, well, it doesn't look like it. This one arm is pretty dense. Wow, that is like way tight. So we're just gonna have to. Go oh, give me my glasses. I can't see. So this whole side will have to be replaced. The other one looks fine. The one right next to the door. Doesn't seem to be bent or damaged at all. Obviously, this has to be completely replaced. I don't know. I think the track is fine up there, but we're not gonna know until Bo gets, gets up there. So, lesson to everyone, put that awning in before you walk away because you don't know if you're gonna get those little quickie storms that nobody was expecting or you were not smart enough to check the weather out before you walked out thinking you'd only be gone for a couple of hours. Looking here. Disconnect. It is not. It's just a channel. So, is that hardwired? Oh, there it is. It's wired in there. That's riveted in there. Take it loose here and here. That's gonna allow this arm to separate. Okay, everybody, from this point, I'm gonna ab lib and do a voiceover. What you see me doing here is I'm actually assessing the whole situation. There is one, two, three pins that I had to remove to separate the awning arm from the actual structure on the side of the rig. Now, you see me messing with that little clip upstairs. That's where all the wiring is. This is a 12 volt system, so it's not gonna like shock you like AC voltage will, but it can give you a little bit of a burn. So what I'm doing is identifying my wires. I'm gonna actually use my wife's phone here in a second to video that a little bit, you'll see. That way when I put it back together, I can splice and actually 
attach the correct wires and always remember disconnect your um, wiring and your battery your battery before your wiring I should say so that when I put it back together I know it's white on white and red on green and white I don't have to rewire that got it hey honey why don't you tell everybody what you're doing I'm researching replacement parts for my awning because we made the mistake of leaving our awning out and took a day trip it did not end well when the storm hit. Rule number one, make a list and follow it every time you leave your RV. And they lived happily ever after. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be good. Well, it's the next morning after the storm. And as you can see, I've gotten the entire awning disassembled and pretty clean on the camper now. Done a little research last night. Just gonna have to order, I believe, the one bar that is bent right there. Hope that's coming out. And maybe, maybe I can spin that back. I just wanted to point out that these uh, the arms with the motors in them they're only held on by these screws right here so not really hard to disassemble and what we're going to do is clean this up dry it up really good and put it in the camper right along the floor right there and basically what's that gonna, that's going to allow us to do is this is moving day so the storm happened on the worst day ever the day before we left and we still have to get through Kansas, which is gonna take us two days to Colorado. I didn't order the parts yet because I wanted to make sure that I had the correct parts. So what we're going to do, once we get to Colorado, I'm gonna order the parts and uh, maybe reassemble and see if I can just bend the original arm back out good enough to get us home. Don't wanna to travel to US carrying that, uh, that, awning assembly inside the inside of the RV if that doesn't work we may actually get the parts ordered and delivered to Colorado we're gonna be there about 11 days and I even thought about maybe having the parts shipped back to Florida because we're gonna spend the winter time there and I'll have plenty of time to get the awning reassembled and if there is any problems I can get the correct parts ordered again so just as a uh, reminder, I'm sure Laura and I'll talk to you one more time before the end of this video. Put your awning in <laughs> when you leave, even if it's for a short period of time, because the storms come up fast. 